Hello and welcome to today's lesson on the Young's Modulus Investigation, which is part of the materials topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how you calculate the Young Modulus based on experimental data. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson, we can define stress and strain. We can define and calculate the Young's Modulus of a material and derive the Young Modulus from experimental values. So it's going to fall into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification specification, the Young Modulus, or in particular, the determination of the Young Modulus by a simple method. So, in this investigation today, we're going to look at deriving the Young Modulus for a material via a simple method, and this material in this particular investigation is going to be nylon. So what would you need? You need a G-clamp, a pulley, a ruler, nylon wire, marker, weights, safety glasses, and a carpet tile. So what would you carry out in this investigation? So over two tables you'd place a pulley at one end of the table and a G clamp with wooden blocks at the other. You'd fasten the nylon wire securely between the two leaving plenty of excess after the pulley. You'd tie the bottom of this excess into a loop using a knot and place a one newton weight in this loop to ensure there is tension in the wire. You would then place a meter ruler horizontally flat underneath the wire, align the ruler so that the zero millimeter is found 30 centimeters away from the G clamp and at the zero millimeter mark of the ruler place a marker normally a piece of sticky tape with a point on the wire and the distance between the marker and the G clamp is the length of the wire. You then place a weight on the loop and measure the new length between the marker and the G clamp. From this work out the extension of the wire from the starting length. When doing this always ensure you have 10 seconds is taken from placing the weight on the loop to, and to measuring the length because this is to account for the idea of creep. Now then you repeat the investigation for various weights and you ensure the weights are carefully placed on the loop and there's a carpet tile under the weight in case the wire snaps. Now the safety glasses should also be worn during the practical. Now when measurements are completed you then measure the diameter of the wire in different places with the screw gauge micrometer and use this to calculate the area of your wire. So what would you do in this investigation? Well you start off by pushing two tables together, you then retrieve some nylon wire. You place the pulley at one end and the G clamp at the other. So place the nylon wire between them where there should be an excess of over the pulley. Now for me the excess should be approximately 30 centimeters and you've got to ensure that the pulley and the G clamp are in line with each other. Now you want your length of wire to be as long as possible but for this investigation you should decide the original length of the wire used. I did suggest 30 centimeters earlier but you might want to choose a longer value but you should always have a logical rationale for the value that you choose. Now you'd want a long long length for your original length of the wire for two possible reasons. An increased original length reduces the percentage uncertainty in the measurement as the absolute uncertainty is constant and you're using a bigger value so it reduces the percentage uncertainty. But also an increased length gives a more noticeable extension as extension and length are, in, are a ratio in proportion and this allows a greater range of results to be taken given more confidence in your result. Now you'll notice at one end you'll be clamping a, the a wire using a G-clamp and a wooden block. Now you've always got to ensure that the wire is trapped securely otherwise it can slip out under extreme forces. You then loop the excess wire on the other side over the pulley with a knot ensuring the loop is strong enough to hold weight. You then hang a 1 newton weight in the loop to produce tension in the wire. So we'll define that as one, the 1 newton is used to produce an, ext an extension of 0 millimeters. You then also should use your hand to straighten out the wire and remove any kinks from the nylon and you might have to repeat this process several times. Now, now for safety, you place a carpet tile underneath the weight so if it does snap, it won't cause any damage. You then retrieve a screw gauge micrometer and you measure the diameter of the wire with the micrometer. Now remember, the main intervals gives you the values in millimetres and the vernier scale gives you the value of the decimal place of the millimetres. You should then measure the diameter in various different points in the wire and calculate an average. You should then use this to calculate the area of the wire. Now again, you should carry this out in various various different places in the wire at random, but take care not to crush the wire with the screw gauge micrometer and you may wish to use the ratchet to tighten your screw gauge. Now for this investigation you should decide the number of values in this investigation you will use to determine the diameter of the wire, but once again always have a logical rationale for this. Now always be aware that applying a deformant force on the wire throughout this investigation may cause our value of the diameter to change. So what you would then do is once you've measured the 
diameter of the wire, you would place the ruler at the end of the G clamp and then you would draw a marker on your sticky tape to allow you to measure the original length of the wire. You then place various weights on the loop and measure the new length between the marker you've placed on there and the G clamp. Using this you derive the extension of the wire from the original length. Now it's my advice to always wait 10 seconds between placing the weight on the loop and measuring the length. This is to account for creep in the wire. Now creeping is when a solid material moves and permanently deforms very slowly so sometimes it takes a bit of time for that wire to actually extend. Now when measuring the length of the wire you should stand directly over the marker and you should wear safety glasses. Now standing over the marker to take measurements reduces the impact of a parallax error in your experimental results. But please be aware when the taut, when when the wire is taut it's an elastic potential energy store so if it snaps the energy store is transferred to kinetic energy and so therefore it could damage your eyes. So as a safety measure what you can do is you can place a shield over the nylon wire in case the wire snaps. So two or three shields should suffice preventing the wire from moving greatly when it snaps. You should therefore measure the length and the extension of the wire from various weights. Now it should be okay to use one holder to place all of your weights in. Now for this investigation you should decide the intervals of mass you use to provide a deformant force but have a logical rationale for this. For this investigation you should decide the range of masses used in the investigation to provide the deformant force but you've got to have a logical rationale for this. You should decide the number of values used in this investigation to provide a deformant force but you should have a logical rationale for this and you should decide the number of repeats used in the investigation to provide a deformant force but once again you should have a logical rationale for this. Now we should take measurements where you should measure the diameter and then calculate your area from that in meters squared. You should also fill in the following results table with your observations. The force applied to the wire in newtons, the length of the wire in millimeters, the extension of the wire in millimeters, the area of the wire in meters squared, the stress of the material in pascals and the strain of the material. Now to note, you can calculate your stress on your material by doing your force applied divided by the area and you can work out your strain by doing the extension of the wire divided by the length of the wire. And once you've got these results, you can then draw a stress strain graph of your results placing the stress on the y axis and the strain on the x axis. You can then draw a line of best fit including error bars on your points and therefore you can then draw in your line of best fit. The gradient of the straight line section of the graph is the Young modulus. Now remember, you can only determine the Young modulus when the material is acting elastically. You can only determine the Young modulus when the material is an elastic potential energy store. So when working out, you should draw your gradient triangle on your graph as large as possible, and this increases the validity of your results as you're considering more data in your value. So what have we looked at in today's lesson? That the Young modulus is the stress over strain, and we can use stress strain graphs to find the Young modulus, and we can look at a method of measurement to do this. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to define stress and define strain. Define and calculate the Young modulus of a material and finally derive the Young modulus from experimental values. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the Young modulus investigation, which is part of the materials topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for watching today's video and as always, have a lovely day.